This week on the LTU Sports Report, we get into all of the winter sports action and get to know some of our student athletes. We've got highlights from our women's lacrosse team taking on Benedictine, the NAIHA hockey team kicks off the WAC tournament playoffs, and we hit the courts for the men's volleyball tip of the week. Don't go anywhere because the LTU Sports Report starts right now. LTU Sports Report is brought to you by Varsity Brands, elevating student experiences in sport, spirit, and achievement. The city of Southfield, the center of it all. Michigan First Credit Union, Hungry Howie's Dough Razor. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust and striker. Discover your strengths and follow your passion with us. Hey Blue Devil fans and welcome into the LTU Sports Report, the only show covering the athletics of an NAIA school exclusively for Lawrence Technological University. I'm your host, Gabe O'Neill. And I'm your host, Jenna Skelsky. On this week's show, we have plenty of highlights coming at you guys from women's lacrosse to tennis, and we'll give you an inside look on what events are going on around campus. That's right, we have a jam-packed show for you filled with all the exciting athletic action from this past week, including a big announcement from our fearless leader, Scott Trudeau. Sounds pretty exciting, Gabe, so you guys are going to have to stick around until the end of the show to see what happens. But for now, we're going to start things with our NAIHA men's hockey team when they start their WAC tournament playoffs at U of M Dearborn. Kicking off the WAC tournament playoffs hosted by U of M Dearborn was the Blue Devil NAIHA hockey team taking on the Cardinals of Concordia University. LSU is able to get the season sweep with four wins over CU this year and looking to make it five. Getting things started early in the opening frame was Drake Gentile finishing in close quarters off a nice pass from the junior Matthew Nurkinen. The senior all-time points leader gets his squad on the board first. And minutes later, Captain Alex Luter got in on the scoring here as he goes top shelf on the goalie with a beautiful backhander. Blue Devils on top 2-0 early in this one and that would hold going into the second period. Opening up the second with Schluter, once again attacking the net, hitting the brakes, and burying it home with some slick moves. His second of the game puts the boys up 3 to nothing. Concordia able to put one in first of the final period, but just minutes later, LTU had an answer. Alec Allen with the puck up top, floats one towards the net, deflected by Max Jomi, and Brendan Price is there to knock it in. CU made it 4-2, to two, but with time ticking off, they risk pulling the goalie. Junior Eddie Flood dumps R.C. Randall chases and is able to bury the empty netter. The freshman celebrates the goal, and his team goes on to advance to the semifinal round against U of M Dearborn after a dominating win over CU, 5-2 the final score. You know, I think all the boys are excited to be here today. We started off hot, two in the first. I think we scored the second, the third, a minute into the second. And then uh, we cooled off. I, they brought the game to us, and we needed to an answer back. And uh, the boys got together, you know, strong third period, shut them down at the end, and we came away with the win, which is what we came to do. I just thought it was a really amazing event to give back to the community and come put smiles on children's faces because it's a hard time to be in the hospital constantly and to be able to have a smile on their face before they go to bed is really awesome. If you look at the sea of people, everybody can see blue dots everywhere from the Blue Devil Horns. Oh, it was a great turnout of some student athletes, uh, Greek students, uh, nursing students were out there and just LTU students in general. It was a great event seeing all the Blue Devils out there. Uh, so it was a great, great turnout. I, I've never seen anything like this before and I'm excited to be here. Obviously being the holiday season, it's great to get out and show, you know, some servant leadership and, you know, give back to the community in times like this. Moonbeams for Sweet Dreams continues every night uh, here at Beaumont Children's Hospital. And I think, you know, being that it's such a positive event, a lot of our players will continue to come out each, you know, every other night or so, you know, to show their support. Honestly, it was really impressive knowing our school. It seems like some students don't like to come out to things, but I think how important this event was a lot more students came out and it was really powerful how many Blue Devil Horns were out there. What's up LTU fans, I'm Chase Kaufman. When we come back from the commercial break, we give you highlights from both our men's and women's tennis teams and we also get to know a Blue Devil student athlete. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.
Southfield truly is the ideal place to live, work, and play. Well, it's a very uh, exciting time in the city of Southfield. Great neighborhoods, great city services, and Fortune 500 companies. Southfield has something for everyone. Recognized as Michigan's premier business address, home to world-class educational institutions, voted one of the nation's most livable metro area suburbs. Southfield is the center of it all. We're getting reports that you have over 40,000 flavor combinations. That's right. May I examine one, ma'am? Is this real cheese? 100% real mozzarella, officer. Explain this dough. Made fresh daily. I'm gonna have to confiscate this as evidence. Aren't you a mall cop? All units, someone's in the fountain. 10-4, tiger on the prowl. Flavor fanatics will do anything for our one-of-a-kind flavored crust pizza with meal deals for every budget. Hungry? Howie's! Fanuc America is the number one supplier of robots, CNCs, and factory automation. Our certified automation training prepares students for high-tech careers in advanced manufacturing. Manufacturers use automation to maximize productivity. That's why high-paying careers in advanced automation are in demand today. Our CERT program provides manufacturers and educators a STEM-based curriculum centered on robotics and automation training. Contact FANUC to learn more about our certified automation training programs. After a tough non-conference schedule, the men's and women's tennis teams are ready for some WAC competition. Let's see how both teams fared against the Cardinals of Concordia University. It's a good win in, in that it's a conference win. Um, Concordia comes in here all the time. They've got some terrific kids. They're always well coached. We've been fortunate enough over the years to uh, do pretty well, be pretty successful against them. Gives us a, a springboard though into tomorrow's match, Indiana Tech, which uh, is going to be a toughie. No two ways about that. They've loaded up this year and we've got a bunch of young kids. So uh, hopefully we will uh, we'll compete well. I won both, uh, both my sets, 6-1, 6-0. Oh. I think it was a good match. There was a lot I could practice, you know, I could, I really, I focused on just practicing my second serves and coming in and being aggressive at the net. And I think it's good preparation for tomorrow's match against Indiana Tech. Feels good winning my, uh, both my sets overall. It's a nice change going in from uh, exhibition into uh, six singles. Overall, I feel, oh, I played very well. It was a good opportunity to practice a lot of things that I've been uh, planning to practice. Overall, I think I played pretty well on the team, did very well. Today it was good uh, getting some good practice in. You know, we dominated as a team and it allowed us to, you know, in the past we've struggled to take our chances, but today we really just worked on closing out the points early, especially at the net and doubles. And our guys really stepped up today. They knew what was on the line. They know it's, it's conference season and uh, I think they want to uh, really compete well, being young and wanting to uh, compete well in the conference. My name is Caitlin Smith. I play for the LTU women's basketball team and my major is nursing. My favorite movie is Step Brothers because it's super funny. I love comedies. My favorite athlete would have to be Kobe Bryant because he's a good basketball player. My favorite musical artist it has to be Drake. No matter what the mood is, you can always listen to him. So. My favorite TV show is The Office because it's super funny and Dwight is my favorite character. My favorite vacation spot is anywhere warm, so Florida or California, and I just love going to the beach. Overall, our team served really well. We did some, we had some great poaches at the net in the doubles matches, which gave us the 2-0 lead after the doubles. And then the singles, we were just overall a stronger team today, and we were more powerful with our shots. Today I did very well with serving um, and coming up to the net, and. Um, just being stronger than my opponent. Today, I served really well and had some great returns. This week, we had a match yesterday and we had a match today, so those were two conference matches leading up to spring break, and we won both of those. And now, next week, we have four matches, so. Well, we had two matches this week in our conference. We had a couple of the matches before that we played very well in, just having those in our back pocket going down there. We know we're gonna play some tough teams down there, but we're looking forward to the trip and putting our skills to the test. Our team did very well with just being a unit. We've had a lot of injuries lately and people being sick, but all coming back and we just pushed through it together. And we were really supportive of each other and that's something even more than winning, it's more important that we're a team and we did very well with that today. Hi everybody, I'm Jason Ross Jr. When we come back, we'll have highlights of our women's lacrosse team taking on Benedictine College, and we'll take you inside the exciting NAIA Football Helmet Wars, so don't go anywhere.
I love working for Strike. I am genuinely excited to come to work every day. We support each other and look out for each other. I love Striker because we are like a family. At Striker, I own my career. There are so many different places Striker can take me in the next five years. Together with our customers, we are driven to make healthcare better. Great people with a strong mission and values can accomplish great things together. You've worked hard to raise your family and build a happy life for them. Don't let unforeseen circumstances jeopardize everything you've built. Planning for your future is a law firm that makes it easy and affordable to protect your family with estate planning, wills, trusts, deeds, power of attorney, minor, and elder care. The experts at Planning for Your Future will meet with you, prepare your documents, and make sure you understand what each does. So contact Planning for Your Future today to set up your free phone consultation. Because your future begins now. Since the dawn of man, storytelling has been the most effective and engaging means of communication. Whether gathered around the warm glow of a fireplace or the family television set, a compelling story has always moved people to action. At Yellow Flag Productions, the Emmy-winning storytellers behind our television programs are now helping clients create content that emphasizes their people and passions. Let us tell your story and share it with the world. Fundraising should be fresh, flavorful, and simple. We have the perfect solution at Hungry Howie's, Dough Razor. Your team or school can sell paper pizza certificates that can be redeemed for one medium pizza at participating locations. Hungry Howie's makes it easy. It's just a little mini pizza box, but we make lots of money, lots of dough. Go to DoughRazor.com to learn more and sign up. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. Welcome to Hungry Howie's Dough Razor. Welcome back everyone. We're here at Birmingham Groves High School for another exciting women's lacrosse game. But before we get to that, our football team has been dominating the NAI's online football helmet wars and our lid has made it to the finals. Let's check out some of the videos that helped boost us into the final week. of the season, the women's lacrosse team was back out in the cold at Groves High School taking on the third ranked Benedictine College Ravens from Atchison, Kentucky. Early stages of the first half with LTU down by one. Junior Anna Gagnon from behind the net looks to set up the offense. She finds freshman Ashley Sherry who lets off a low angle shot that finds the back of the net. Blue Devils tie it up one all. Not much later with the game still tied. The ladies do a good job of clearing the ball downfield as Katie waits, speeds into the Raven zone and feeds Sherry in front of the net who buries her second on the day despite taking a big hit. She would finish with three goals on the day and LTU takes their first lead of the game. Jump to the second half with LTU down by a few and staying in it thanks to the efforts of sophomore goalie Dory Kogan. Kogan had 16 total saves in the game, one of them here as she makes an impressive stop on a short range shot and then clears the danger. Unfortunately, Benedictine would run away with this one, piling on a handful of goals in the second frame to take down the Blue Devils. The women's lacrosse team drops this one to a solid third ranked Benedictine College by a score of 16 to 11. I definitely think the biggest thing that we need to work on is our team bonding. You know, out on the field, we're working hard and we have the hustle, we're just not meshing and that's the biggest component I think we need. They get up or they score a couple goals and we can almost start to panic and it's like we're in the game still and 
it's almost like we let them control things versus us just coming out. And I mean, we have the talent, we've shown it, we've, we've been up, um, we just can't hold on. And unfortunately, some injuries are really hurting us right now. And I just, we just don't have the depth, so they are getting pretty tired. Hello, my name is Stefan. Uh, for the, this week's tip of the week, I'll be talking about men's volleyball digging. Digging is a really important part of volleyball. In digging is the number one thing in volleyball because you need to dig the ball so you can get gain some points. Uh, digging is basically when the opponent's team hit the ball, you defend. For proper digging, your body language is most important. You can't be straighting, standing straight. You have to be in the ready position, always ready to go. Your hands need to be in neutral position because you might be forced to defend with your platform or with your hands. I'm going to be demonstrating the defending positions now. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Davis. Coming up on the L2 Sports Report, our men's volleyball team is back in action against the Grey Wolves from Lords University. And we get to catch up with Athletic Director Scott Trudeau for a pretty big announcement. Stay tuned. I'm on the Blue Devil football team, and that's a great place to be because other colleges wouldn't let me be both a football player and a nursing student. And just because I'm a dog on the field doesn't mean I can't take care of people. And man, do I love people. The small class size at LTU give me awesome access to my nursing professors. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. Are you stuck in your job? Getting frustrated playing the waiting game for the next opportunity to advance your career? Let Blue Chip Talent help. As an award-winning talent acquisition company, our specialty is matching candidates with careers in IT and engineering. At Blue Chip Talent, we take a laser-focused approach to reaching your career goals. We have access to jobs you won't find anywhere else to help advance your career faster and easier. Plus, we take care of you. Employees receive industry-leading benefits and competitive perks. Don't waste another minute worrying because we are ridiculously good at advancing careers. Southfield truly is the ideal place to live, work, and play. Well, it's a very uh, exciting time in the city of Southfield. Great neighborhoods, great city services, and Fortune 500 companies. Southfield has something for everyone. Recognized as Michigan's premier business address, home to world-class educational institutions, voted one of the nation's most livable metro area suburbs. Southfield is the center of it all. Welcome back everyone. We're here in the Don Riddler Fieldhouse getting ready for a big conference matchup as our men's volleyball team takes on Lords University. Let's roll the highlights. In the Don Riddler Fieldhouse, the men's volleyball team was up against the second ranked Lords Grey Wolves for the last of two meetings this season. Early in the first set with the Blue Devils down one, Lords on the serve. Gospel Sua with the nice set for Zach Narkowitz who fakes the spike and drops it in behind the Grey Wolves front line. The sophomore would tie the game up but LTU would drop the set in the end 25 to 19. Second set now, LTU down a handful. The boys in blue do a good job of getting Lords out of position with the attack. Another chance to score as Sua finds junior Josh Eckert. His powerful spike is blocked out of bounds, and LTU finishes the nice volley. Unfortunately, the Grey Wolves would take the set 25 to 16. Now late in the third set at 22 apiece, Calvin Ooms and Sua play a little give and go here as the freshman digs and then puts it down with authority. Sua had a team high of 30 assists and Ooms with a team high of 12 kills to help take the third set. Another close game in the fourth set. Game point, 25-24 for the Grey Wolves. And their defense would stay tall here, stuffing Ooms spike to take the win overall. Lords takes the match three sets to one, but an impressive battle for the up and coming Blue Devils volleyball team. So again, I think we executed a higher level than we have in the past when we played them. And then uh, we were ready to swing back. Right? So normally uh, when you meet a team as successful as Lords, you get intimidated. They, th they work on a lot of things and they start scoring points in bunches and you just fold. So today we uh, were able to stop a lot of the runs. Taking a set off them is a positive, huge positive. I don't think anybody had us uh, uh, um, taking a set off them because we've been up and down with pieces and parts of our lineup. We've 
run seven different lineups, right? And they've run two, all right, all season. So, I mean, it's just one of those things that they are really consistent and we're still all over the place trying to find the right magic. You know, I think the biggest thing was uh, communication. Making our serves was a big thing. You know, we got a couple runs, you know. We were up by six, then we like let them get in. But I think the biggest thing was communication and making our serves. I mean, it says that we can be with the best, you know. They're number two, they're, they're really good. But it just showed that with hard work and dedication, we can come out and, you know, perform on a high level. Hey everybody and welcome inside Alumni Hall. I'm joined today by Scott Trudeau, the Athletic Director here at Lawrence Tech University. And we have some pretty big news to announce. Scott, why don't you take it away? Yeah, so uh, we're announcing the launch of a track and field team here at Lawrence Tech. Our newest and latest great, greatest sport. And what number does that make total varsity sports here at Lawrence Tech? So with men's and women's track and field, that'll put us at 27 and 28 teams. Okay, it's growing every day, definitely. Yeah. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about the coaching search process? If that's not the first step, it's definitely one or two. So kind of just give us a little bit on that. Yeah, so what we did was we looked internally first and foremost and uh, found a, quite a few qualified guys that were interested in the position. and. It just made most sense to us right now because we're kind of rolling it out in a two-year phase. So we just uh, utilized uh, our cross-country guy to do the long-distance runners, um, Coach Davis from our football staff to work with the, a lot of the uh, field events, and then Coach Lightfoot from our basketball staff to do the sprinting events. So it uh, just made sense for us. They, they're going to be basically recruiting for a year and a half um, before we actually compete. So. Um, these guys are good at recruiting, so it was kind of a no-brainer for us to go with these three. Definitely, and like you said, head coach Eric Green, who's also with us today, is going to be helping lead the charge on the track and field events. And so, coach, just to really get into it with you, how does this affect you as a cross-country coach transitioning to um, track and field as well? How does that help in the recruiting process? Well, it's helped tremendously for me for next year because I already have six or seven kids that are coming, and half of them uh, with them hearing that we were going to have track and field basically helped in the commitment process that they're able to do both sports instead of just one. Having tracks really going to um, benefit us in cross country in the long run. Just real quickly to get into it, you have started the new football program. You were with it from the start a couple years ago. How do you think that is going to help you in creating this new track and field team? Uh, I'm going to try and stick to similar um, guidelines that have brought me success so far for football. Um, you know, just stick to that, stick to your guns, find engineers, find high academic kids who want a great education, uh, know that they're going to be paid after after they get done and graduate, and you know, that they'll have a job waiting for them by the time it's, their journey's all finished. So um, for me, that's it's a no-brainer. If you want engineering, this is the place to be, and uh, you know, I, I think I really believe strongly in this school and this program, and I think we're going to do nothing but keep climbing. So. Coach Light, how do you see um, the transition from players who are already in, locked into one sport, such as basketball, to maybe possibly also competing in track and field? Are you going to be a little skeptical about maybe some of your starting players wanting to run in an event, or are you going to be encouraging of it? Well, I, I, I really hope that a lot of our players take advantage of the opportunity, but I, I think it's great for, for um, athletes to play dual sport. For our guys, and I know for a lot of football guys, um, a lot of the training is very similar. Um, and it'll help a lot of our guys stay in shape and stay fit over the off season um, and add some explosion and add some um, some quickness to, to, to what they already can do. Um, for all of those kids who maybe want to recruit themselves or are watching this and want to know how to get involved in becoming part of this new track and field team, um, what would you say that they should, what's their first step in uh, getting involved in that process? So I think the first step is uh, getting onto our website go into ltuathletics.com, uh, click on the Be Recruited form that they can fill out. It'll actually go to all three of the coaches. It'll get to the admissions office um, so they can recruit them as a student first and foremost from the admissions side and then the coaches can get out and see them compete this spring on their track and field events. So get on their radar that they're interested in Lawrence Tech and then coaches can go out and see, hey, if they're going to be a good fit on our team, we'd more than welcome them to Lawrence Tech. This week in LTU Athletics, our sports teams take their talents down south. On Monday the 11th, softball has three games. Game one is against Marion University at 9 a.m. Game two is at Missouri Baptist University at 11.15 a.m. 
Game three is at Doan University at 3.45 p.m. Baseball travels to play Ave Maria University. Game one is at 11 a.m. and both tennis teams hit the road to face Barry College. Both matches will start at 5.30 p.m. Tuesday the 12th, both tennis teams play at Georgetown College at 8.15 a.m. Men's lacrosse travels to play Montreal College at 10 a.m. Women's lacrosse is on the road to face Kaiser University at 1 p.m. Baseball plays at Warner University. First pitch is at 6 p.m. Men's volleyball travels to play Bruton Parker at 6 p.m. On Wednesday the 13th, both tennis teams continue road play versus Gettysburg College. Both matches begin at 12.30 p.m. Softball has two games. Game one is at Indiana University South End at 1.45 p.m. And game two is versus St. Ambrose University at 4 p.m. Thursday the 14th, both golf teams will play at the Grand National Golf Club through Friday. Baseball has an early game versus St. Ambrose University at 11 a.m. Softball has a three-game slate. Game one is at Doan University at 1.30 p.m. Game two is versus Missouri Baptist University at 3.45 p.m. And game three is at College of St. Mary at 6 p.m. PM. Men's lacrosse continues their road trip playing Cumberland at 3 p.m. Friday the 15th, softball has two games. Game one is at St. Mary of the Woods College at 9 a.m. Game two is at Indian University South Bend at 11.15 a.m. Men's volleyball has a double header. Game one is at Bluefield College at 11 a.m. and game two is at Reinhardt University at 1 p.m. Men's tennis travels to play Thomas Moore College at 12 p.m. Baseball has back-to-back -back games. Visit our website to find out who we play. Wrapping up a very busy week, baseball travels to Aquinas for a 10 a.m. game. Women's lacrosse travels to Ave Maria University for a 1 p.m. game and men's lacrosse is at Kaiser University. That's all we have for you this week on the L2 Sports Report. Coming up next week, we get in all the exciting spring break sports action from our teams competing all over the country. For more action from Lawrence Tech Sports, be sure to follow LT Athletics on all social media platforms for daily updates, stories, and highlights at LTU Athletics. And don't forget to join us next week right here on Fox Sports Detroit at 4.30 every Monday. And until then, I'm Gabe O'Neill. And I'm Jenna Skelski, and we'll see you guys next week. LTU Sports Report is brought to you by Varsity Brands. Elevating student experiences in sport, spirit, and achievement. The City of Southfield, the center of it all. Michigan First Credit Union. Hungry Howie's Dough Razor. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. And Striker. Discover your strengths and follow your passion with us.